Huzzah, and welcome future and current artists to another episode of Drawing with Dr. Doodle. Well, before we begin, you're only going to need two items. Hopefully you have these, a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, if you want to color your work in when we're done and you have a crayon or a colored pencil or markers, you can color it in when we finish today. However, if you don't have those supplies right now, you can always wait to color your work in when you get those supplies. So you know what? Let's begin. Hello and welcome to today's episode where you will learn how to draw an anthropomorphic sports playing animal. Anthropomorphic just meaning uh, something that's not human that has the same characteristics as a human, like emotions and the physical traits. And in this case, this is an example of one of my own drawings, this is one of my own artworks, um, of dinosaur baseball players, or as I like to call it, the Dino Baseball League. So as you can see right here, I'm sketching out some of my ideas, and one of the ones that I really love is that this is going to be a T-Rex, and he's using his own tail as a baseball bat. So he's up to bat, and he's using his giant tail to make up for the fact that he has tiny hands. And so what I would suggest for all of you, other than drawing like I'm doing here with the basics first and then the details after, is to have fun with your drawing. Because you should be creating art not only for yourself and to have fun, but you can have fun while trying to draw things that might be a little bit challenging. And if this is challenging for you and you want to follow along, just pause the video wherever it is that you need to pause it or even, you know, um, rewind and, and go back through the timeline, scrub through it, and you can see. So along with adding uh, the tail baseball bat, you can see I've given this T-Rex a baseball helmet, a batter's helmet, and a baseball jersey, which is hard to tell right now before I color it all in. But as you can see, I've shrunk it a little bit so that way there's more room for the other players and I'm starting with a um, baseball player who's in the outfield because I was thinking, okay, so we've got a batter, so let's have somebody in the field and in this case I thought of a really cute idea where it will be a pterodactyl. Uh, because they can fly. So any fly balls into the outfield, here you go, you've got a pterodactyl that's gonna catch it. And as you can see, because I'm using my iPad Pro, I'm able to digitally edit this. I'm digitally able to make corrections and grab the, um, the baseball mitt that was on um, the pterodactyl's right hand and flip it digitally and put it on the left hand. And I did that with a purpose in mind. There's something called implied lines. And what they are, they're imaginary lines that are, that how our eyes and brains work draws us through an artwork. So from the dinosaur, uh, the T-Rex's tail, baseball bat tail, there's an implied line directly. It's kind of like an arrow pointing towards the pterodactyl. And I wanted to make sure that that line would flow to uh, the right hand side of the artwork and have you flow through the artwork. So as you can see, I've added details for the pterodactyl and I've given it, it a baseball um, jersey and shorts and a baseball hat. And now I'm drawing uh, another dinosaur that would be possibly running um, because they're, that uh, this dinosaur is team is up to bat and so it's running the bases so what would be very scary while you're on the field and um and a player is charging at you well it would be a triceratops as you can see here and i'm changing up the details i wanted uh the triceratops just like with the other dinos to not be too aggressive i want it to be a mixture of aggressive and and strong but also you know cute and, and that's what, why I was fixing up the eyes, the nose, and the horn. But as you can see, uh, this Triceratops is smiling um, and it's charging because it's run, trying to um, make it to home plate, to home base. And yes, it does look a little bit like a, a football player, but that's not the case here. 
So as you saw just before, there was a line on the top of the head and I was wondering if I should even add a helmet because this uh, dinosaur was up to bat, but I decided against it. And because this is digital, I can do something like this where I'm able to take the dinosaur, the Triceratops, uh, copy it, paste it, so that way it's in the other in the group with the other two dinos and it's going to be um, overlapping the pterodactyl and now i'm starting to ink it in inking in is use is just the term meant to trace your pencil lines with any kind of inking pen it could be an inking brush or in this case a digital inking pen and what you can see that i'm doing here is that I am tracing over all my lines. I might not trace it exactly if I don't think it looks exactly the way that I envision it, or I might even add new lines, and that's okay. Just know though that if you're not using uh, a device like the iPad Pro, something digital, and you're doing this on a piece of paper, once you ink this in, unless you trace it again on a new piece of paper, um, you, the ink is permanent, so you won't be able to erase it. Just keep that in mind. So here I'm just changing up how the arm looks. I'm giving the player a little bit more muscle, and now I'm inking in and adding the nails to the fingers. And as you can see, this, just like the other dinosaurs, this is an anthropomorph anthropomorphic, I apologize for the pronunciation, but an anthropomorphic uh, dinosaur. So it's a mixture of dinosaur traits and animal traits. And you've probably seen anthropomorphic things before in many cartoons um, and movies. So as I ink this in, I want you to think about what kind of animal or it doesn't need to be an animal. It could be uh, something that's not alive or a plant. And just think about what kind of thing that you want to draw if you don't want to copy what I've drawn here and what you would want what you would want them to be playing sport wise so maybe you want to have um, let's say um, a dolphin and and it's an anthropomorphized dolphin or a bunch of dolphins and they're on a swim team so now jumping back to what you're seeing here with the example you can see I'm starting to color it in. And I'm not just randomly coloring things in, I'm deciding on what works best. And th the reason why I chose blue for the top of the jersey um, was because blue and orange are complementary colors. And if you don't remember what complementary colors are, they simply are colors that work very well together. Orange and blue are complements, uh, purple and yellow are complements, and red and green are complements. So I started to add the shadows, um, as you can see here, and I'm not using black, I'm using a darker version of the color that the flat colors were. So a darker version of blue, orange, and so on. And now I'm inking in the T-Rex. So getting back to what I would suggest that you do after you've watched this video is you can either follow along with this video and or, so you can follow along, draw what I've drawn, uh, try to make copies, but you can also draw your own anthropomorphic creations that are playing sports. So like I was saying, dolphins that are swimming, so come up with animals that either uh, would work really well playing those sports, or that would be uh, very unique and interesting to see. So maybe um, what you could do is for, you can have, bunny rabbits that are gymnasts if you want to or uh, maybe a flamingo doing uh, you know uh, being dancers so with as you can see I'm coloring in the t-rex with flat colors uh, that's what I would suggest you do when you're coloring it in color it in with the um, not the brightest of the color not the darkest that way you can add both shadows and highlights if you would like to. So here I decided that the yellow just wasn't working and I decided to go with purple and have yellow. Remember, yellow and purple are complementary colors as well. So I knew that I was gonna have a yellowish belly, so that's why I decided to have the purple for the, the helmet and the jersey.
but now I'm starting to add the shadows. And for those who don't remember, and those are the highlights, for those who don't remember, wherever there are highlights, on the opposite side is where the shadows are. Because what shadows actually are, are just um, the absence of light or light being blocked. That's what creates a shadow. So now that I've colored in both the T-Rex um, dino baseball player that's up to bat and the uh, dino ba uh, baseball player um, triceratops that's running the bases, now I'm inking in the pterodactyl. So as you can see, I'm changing uh, the lines when I'm inking it in from the initial pencil lines because I don't think that they're as dynamic, dynamic meaning that they look both as good as they could be and also dynamic in the sense of that it f creates the illusion of motion or movement. So now I'm up to coloring in flat colors first. Since I already have green and an orange dino, I decided that I would go with like a, a reddish dino. So bright colors and then dark within the flaps of the wing, brown baseball mitt, white shorts, and then I'm deciding on what colors I want for uh, this pterodactyl's jersey. And then once I'm done, I'm able to uh, add more details, color in more details, change the color of the horns, and so on and so forth. So if you've gotten to the end of this section of anthropomorphic, well, my example, then I suggest that we take a well-deserved puzzle break. As an artist, it's a good idea to take a break from your work. Taking a break allows us to look at our work with fresh eyes and possibly with some new ideas. So that's why we're going to take a puzzle break. And what type of puzzles are we going to do on Drawing with Dr. Doodle? Well, we're going to tackle puzzles that I love to do. They're called Rebus puzzles. Rebus is spelled R-E-B-U-S. And what is a Rebus puzzle? Well, I'm glad you asked. Behind me is an example of just one, and we're going to walk through the solution to this puzzle right now. So what word do you see behind me? Well, take your time. If you guessed the word behind me is hurry, then you're half right. What direction is the word hurry going in? Well, take some more time to solve that. Well, if you guess that the word hurry is going up, then you have half of the solution as well. So let's combine the two half answers or half solutions that we solve together. Hurry, so we've got the word hurry, and the word hurry is going up. And if you heard me just say that and it clicked in your head that the answer is hurry up, then you have solved this rebus. So with that out of the way, why don't you try to solve this puzzle by yourself, but you don't need to worry, hurry up to solve this puzzle. Take your time, and if you get your parents' permission, you can email the solution to thedoodledoctor at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the lesson. Now that you had a well-deserved break, you can see another idea that I had here, another anthropomorphic uh, sports player. In this case, it's an alligator or crocodile playing basketball. So let's walk through these steps and maybe this will inspire you or maybe it has inspired you and this is the, excuse me, maybe this is the you know, drawing that you would like to try to follow along with or copy. Now, because I'm drawing this digitally, as you can see, I'm first drawing this a lot larger than it's going to be. I will shrink it down. So you might not want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. Try to draw your drawing if you're following what I'm doing right here a little bit smaller, unless you're doing this digitally on your own iPad or other drawing device. So as you can see, my lines are very hard to understand fully right away. These are sketch lines. I'm sketching. I'm trying to lay out where everything is. And then I go back in and have more non-finalized lines, just 
uh, trying to figure out where I want everything to go. I change the, the size of the tail even some more. And then I shrink it down and I start drawing in the legs. And I decide that I want to have it so that the tail loops over the head so that way he's ho holding onto the uh, rim and using his tail to slam dunk in this basketball net and hoop. So once I feel like I've done enough with the, uh, you know, just the, the lines, this is when I start inking in because I've added some of the details and this drawing here is different from the last drawing or the previous drawing that you just saw of the Dino Baseball League players because, the, well, what is the difference? Well, the difference is that with regards to this drawing here, this drawing was done just me having fun randomly. I didn't um, think up this concept. This concept didn't come to me and I didn't plan it out. I just was having fun. And I think I was asking, actually, this was a couple of years ago, maybe even in 2016, maybe early, uh, you know, it must have been around 2016. Um, I was asking some sixth grade, I don't remember who, it's been a while, but I asked some sixth graders during their free draw time to give me or throw me some ideas. And I, I gave out like, okay, um, what do you want me to draw? And I think I was told a uh, basketball player slam dunking. So I said, how would you feel about a uh, an alligator or a crocodile slam dunking? And they're like, yeah, sure. Let's see if you can do it. So I did this um, in the, at least the pencil lines I, I did it in front of them. And then I showed them the next day after I inked this in. So as you can see, I had a lot of fun with this. You can see the emotions on this alligator or crocodile's face. That's actually how I felt while I was creating this. I don't know about you, but when, I, because I'm a very visual learner, um, w when I look at something that I've either created or drawn or even artwork that I've looked at uh, or read, um, like a comic book or something like that, I can usually remember exactly what was going on and how I was feeling when I either created the art or when I viewed that art for the first time. So here I'm adding scales all over. As you can see, I'm not filling in the whole crocodile with scales. I think I've shared this with uh, my fourth graders and up, but you can always imply details without filling up the whole object. So for instance, with regards to scales, Oh, so very quickly, see, even at the very end, I, I changed how the foot was. I wanted it to be more dynamic and to look like it was actually happening, the slam dunk. You could see the energy or feel it. Anyway, so I'm showing uh, the fact that this has scales just by having some of the crocodile filled with scales. And in your mind, you will fill in the rest. Now I'm up to coloring. I'm doing flat colors first, just like I did with the Dino Baseball League. And then I use darker versions of the of this same flat color to add the shadows and then lighter versions of that to add highlights. So wherever there's a highlight, that's where light is hitting an object. So the shadows will be on the opposite side. If you do this, if you follow these rules, just like what you're going to see with the finished result of my crocodile alligator uh, slam dunking basketball player, it'll look a lot more 3D, it'll pop out of your artwork. If you just use flat colors, it will not look three-dimensional and it will be flat, which is okay if that's what you're going for, but it'll look more like a cartoon character. So as you can see, I put shadows underneath the arm and below the arm on the jersey because the arm is blocking the light. And as you can also see, the jersey is purple and yellow. If you remember correctly, purple and yellow are that's right, complementary colors. They look great together. And that's why a lot of sports teams that you might know or don't know use complementary colors for their jerseys. So if you know um, basketball, then you know what purple and yellow, what team it signifies. And if you don't, you can look that up 
it's, I'll give you a hint, it's a team in LA. So now I'm starting to color in the rest of my alligator slam dunking basketball player. And you can see that if I'm coloring, uh, it looks kind of like a mistake, but that's actually the other arm. That's You don't see the full other arm, so I didn't really need to add a lot of detail back there. Just colored it in to hint at that that's the other arm. And now I'm just going in, adding more details wherever I feel like it, it's necessary. Adding the red around basketball net and the, um, the backboard and then the gray in, in the net. And yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope this inspired you and motivated you. And I can't wait to see what you create after watching this video. Now it's time for me, Harold, the extremely talented art critic, to critique your artwork. Wait, what? Don't I worry, didn't agree Dr. to D. this. I won't be too harsh. Why, thank you. Uh, what? Okay, Wait. fellow art detectives, let's get critiquing. What do you see? What do you think is happening in this artwork? What materials do you think the artist used to make this artwork? Does this remind you of anything? What questions do you have about the artwork? Pretend you can enter into the artwork. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What piece of the artwork is your favorite and why? If you could change one thing about this artwork, what would you change? How does this artwork make you feel? Can you explain why? If you had to describe this artwork to a friend, what kind of words would you use? So, Dr. D, was that so hard now? It wasn't hard at all, Harold. Hope Thank you. Is how hard I will critique him next time. Until next time, future and current artists, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed creating art with me and that I've inspired you to create as imaginative artwork in the future. If you'd like to have your work displayed on, the sh on a future episode, Obviously, you need your parents' permission, but once you get it, you can email your artwork at thedoodledoctor at gmail.com. Well, bye.